and 14-year-old Libby German. A news conference has been set for Monday by the Indiana State Police, presumably to update the public on this case. This is a case many of you have been following and people around the world have been following for the last five years. The girls went on a walk on February 13th, 2017 in a well-known local wooded area in Delphi, Indiana, across this bridge. When a family member went to pick them up at the allotted time or the meeting spot, they were gone. Their bodies were found the next morning, less than a mile away. Investigators did recover this video that we have seen so many times on one of the girls' cell phone. The person that investigators believe is responsible for these teenage girls' death. But despite tens of thousands of tips, hundreds of interviews, there has been nothing. Uh, well, there's not been nothing. There have been suspects. There have been uh, many people who have been brought into the limelight, people thinking that they might be responsible. The investigators have interviewed literally hundreds of people in this, and they have received thousands of tips. And now today, there has been finally an arrest in this case. With us to talk about it, retired FBI agent Bobby Chacon, psychotherapist Dr. Janie Lacey, and criminal defense attorney Jacob Will. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Whew. Bobby, to you, you've been covering this with us with, on, on Vinny's show a lot. This is a case from an investigator standpoint that um, had to have been a nightmare uh, because it was it hit so close to home in this small town. Initial thoughts today, you're hearing that there has been an arrest. My initial thought is they probably have their man because they've been very careful in, in their release of information. There's been like, this case has been earmarked by like uh, certain press conferences that seemed very imminent, something was going to happen and then things would die down for a while, you wouldn't hear anything. We've had search warrants, we've had, we've had sketches come out, sometimes the sketches don't look like the previous sketches. So we've had like, periods of intense attention and then silence. And so I think that that tells me that the investigators were working on things. This did, did never went cold. They were just keeping things close to the vest as they could. Now that could mean because they didn't want leaks because somebody, it was somebody in the, the local community or something like that. There was a press conference a few years ago where the sheriff said the person could be in this room and it was all, it was very, you know, it looked like things were imminent and then it got quiet again. So I think that they, they, they dotted their I's and crossed their T's and I think in, in my mind, they have their man. Dr. Lacey, what uh, kind of individual were they looking for, do you think? Uh, someone, uh, it takes a special person to um, do something like this uh, and then get away with it as well for such an extended period of time. Well, for such an expended time, just imagine the psychological and mental anguish that the family had gone through. So when you look at a person that somebody would be looking at in this case, right, you always start with the inner circle and you work your way out. And then you're going to different types of areas in the sense of figuring out who would even have access. So the fact that there's a potential person and a mystery solve, right, so now and all these other types of things that the family was going through, the leads that were not coming through, just the back and forth, and we are here at this place where they finally can have their answers and can put this uh, behind them. Jacob, what stands out to you here? Five years in the making and now an arrest. Well, certainly, Ted, some of the first things that I would be worried about are, you know, what's the state of the evidence? Uh, if you're going to have to defend someone in a situation like this, you need to know, is there evidence that's been lost? Has it been misplaced? Are there witnesses that are no longer available? Uh, you know, five years isn't a long time in terms of uh, real cold cases that can stretch 20 or 30 years even, but still five years, there might be witnesses that may not be available anymore. Certainly witnesses that they do have, their memories may have faded. So th there are certain concerns that I would have uh, if I was gonna have to represent this person, whoever it's going to be uh, uh, released to be. Yeah, well, one of the initial people, uh, Ronald Logan, 77 year old who owned the property that the girls were found on, he's dead. Um, he was a, a person that was l investigated, if you will, um, wasn't a, sus a bad suspect, but to your point, uh, it has been a while. Let's watch uh, again this video that we've all, I'm sure, watched uh, dozens and dozens of times, captured by one of the girls and the individual telling them to go down the hill. It is short, but this uh, has been what has kept this case alive on, on many levels. Downhill, 
Bobby, are you surprised that given the audio that was released, the attention this case has gotten, and that video of the individual, albeit in a large jacket, that it has taken five years for an arrest, that a family member or somebody didn't recognize this individual? No, I'm not really surprised. Look, I'm a head veteran of a lot of long-term investigations, and they take twists and turns. You mentioned Mr. Logan, who owned the property, and he lied about his alibi, and so they did a search warrant. You know, they had probable cause to do a search warrant on his house. So there have been leads and avenues that were followed that, that maybe turned up not to be uh, the right ones, and so they reverse direction and go back to the beginning and start over again. Um, there, That video was released initially. Remember, the audio took a while to be released. We didn't hear the audio for a little while after the video was released. The audio is very scratchy. Um, I was more surprised that someone didn't recognize the video because the person seems to have a particular body shape and a particular gait as he's walking across. Now, he's navigating a railroad bridge, so that may explain that. But I'm surprised that somebody in the local community didn't recognize that. Now, maybe they did, and maybe they reported people, and maybe those people were investigated and ruled out. Um, but this person particularly has a, a particular style of dress, a particular body shape and stuff. So if I, if that was one of my relatives or if somebody I knew, I probably could pick them out just from that video. So that in that sense, it's a little surprising because you do get a, a pretty clear picture, maybe not of his face, obviously, but of his body shape, his size, his, his gait, and things like that. So, um, but again, that may fit a lot of people in that area. So there may have been a lot of leads to track down, but I'm not, I'm not surprised it took this long because you really, other than this, you have no witnesses in this case. That's a good, great point. In, in the amount of um, help, if you will, that the community and the country um, provided law enforcement was so extensive that it may have been cumbersome it, 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 to, to find the needle in the haystack. And on the back end, Jacob, um, all those leads, all of this will be part of discovery. It, it's going to complicate uh, potential prosecution as well because of uh, all of these other suspects that have been, uh, you know, that, that have come up to the top of the surface. Right, we're talking thousands of tips, we're talking hundreds of interviews, we're talking hundreds of potential suspects. If you're defending someone in this situation, you want to exhaust every other opportunity that you might have to say, look, it wasn't my client, look at all these other people over here. Uh, when you talk about cases where people have been exonerated, that's usually the situation. They weren't given information about potential other suspects. So the, the nature of this investigation and how long it took and how extensive and comprehensive it was is certainly going to have an impact in how long it takes just to litigate the case. And that's even in the discovery phase. Uh, trial itself is a different animal altogether. Uh, and we'll know more about that as this case unfolds. One of the individuals that uh, we've all gotten to know over the last five years is the lead investigator with the Indiana State Police, Doug Carter. Um, he is a unique person. And, and even two, three, four years, five years into this, uh, he has always been very positive. And he recently was on Good Morning America uh, within the last few months. And he had a warning for the individual responsible for these two little girls' death. Take a listen. My resolve to catch him is as strong now as it was day one. But the difference now between now and, and day one is we know about you, a lot about you. Today could be the day. Sleep well. Dr. Lacey, for the, the families, this had to have been an excruciating five years, but now they're entering, they will enter another chapter, which is not gonna be easy as well. You know, we think about the grief cycle. There's this time where there's a lot of confusion, there's shock, right? There's trying to make sense of it. So what we're gonna see happening, and it's gonna be very normal, is there's also gonna be an angry, uh, an anger stage. And there's that can come out in many different emotions, especially now that there is a face, there's a name, and there's somebody that is now added to the puzzle that who's who, who will be held responsible. So what we're probably going to see is gonna be all the things that was held inside in their mental structure and their psychological structure as they were holding out hope to get answers for these young girls. Bobby, what challenges did Superintendent Carter and everybody else who worked on this, uh, including the federal government, the FBI, and others were involved, obviously? Um, when a case gets this big, um, you, you do get all those tips, but all, you, there are a lot of cooks in the kitchen and, and also um, a lot of noise that you have to filter out. 
Yeah, well, you know, in my when I was with the FBI and doing these types of cases, um, we had people like victim witness associates that that handled the family. So you you try to limit what your investigators have to do. So if somebody else talks to the press, somebody else talks to the family, and me as the investigator will give those people the things that they need either to talk to the press or talk, but you try to limit the the, the white noise that can, can, can seek, seep in and confuse and, and, and distract investigators. So you try to let the investigators just stay to the facts, state of the physical evidence in the case and all the other noise surrounding the case you try to insulate them that's why like i was never in favor of myself talking to the families there was somebody with better training than me to deal with things like the doctor just described and i could give them the details and then sometimes family wants to know the details sometimes they don't and so that person could deal as a liaison with the families we also had obviously public information officers was our liaison to the media and so you try to insulate the investigators so that they can just do their job, stay on the trail of the facts, stick with the physical evidence in the case, and pursue the person that you think did it. As we look at the video from uh, the Delphi area in Indiana, I've, I've been to this area, it is rural and it is close-knit, and this has been a horrific nightmare, not only for the families, but for the community of, of Delphi and including this, the entire state of Indiana. People have been uh, waiting for this day again, the breaking news at this hour. There has been an arrest in the Delphi murders. Our rolling coverage will continue right after this. This is Court TV, your front row seat to justice. Stay with us. Holly Osborne, a woman accused of killing her husband in his sleep. Can the defense put reasonable doubt in the minds of this jury? The Sleeping Husband Murder Trial. Trial coverage today on Court TV. Tonight on Closing Arguments, a deep dive into the Alec Baldwin movie set shooting. Our experts go in-depth on where the investigation stands now and what might be next for the actor. Closing Arguments tonight at 8, 7 central. Save 15% off your purchase.